Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, we're going to take this image right here and turn it into this image. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here's the original image of this waterfall. Now it was a rainy, dull, and dreary day. I had water hitting my lens. It was was kind of a miserable cold and wet day. It was uh, in the spring. Not many leaves out on the trees. In this case, not any. There's a, Yeah, there's a few actually here. But uh, I really like the scene. I like the way this water was cascading down. But I thought, you know, after looking at it, it just it didn't do much for me, okay? So I thought, well, what if I would turn it into uh, more of an artistic look? And I'll show you what I came up with. And that is this look right here. Now, I'm really happy with this. I think it turned out nicely. I'm going to show you every step that I take to get here. Well, pretty much every step because we're actually going to start out. Uh, I did a few little things here like I added Topaz Sharp and AI. I cleaned up some of the uh, junk in the screen because I had some water drops on the lens and things like that. And then I did some cleanup and then I just pulled it all together here. So let's get started and see how we can make this happen. First thing I want to do is duplicate my background layer. So that's Command or Control J. And then I'm going to, let's just name it. Let's call this uh, Simplify 4. It's a good habit to name your layers. I don't know if I'll continue to name them because I don't want this video going too long. But let's come up here to Filter and let me take this into Topaz Labs Simplify 4. So I thought in this particular image, I would do some simplifying to it. Let me go ahead and reset it. And let's see here. I took my simplify strength up to about 21, somewhere in there. Let's just go there with 21. Now simplify four takes a little bit of time. It's a little slow. And I bumped up my detail strength to like 0.26. And... Okay, so we got that at 0.26. Then I went to adjust here and I bumped the contrast up or back. I pulled the contrast back a little bit to I believe like 0.98. Get as close as I can to that. There it is, 0.98. Saturation, I bumped the saturation up a little bit to like right around 110, 19. And the dynamics. Uh, I pulled the dynamics up, so that just adds a little dynamic look. It kind of brightens it up a little bit, gives it a little bit of zing and pop. Then I added a little bit of edges to it. So edges, I left it on color edge, but I changed it to fine. And I just wanted to pull up some edges here, so I took the edge strength up to, where was it, around 1.64, just to build up some of those edges takes a little bit of time to render out here as you can see the edges are building up a little bit and then I took the structure let's see under adjust here I took the structure up to 1.25 just to add a little bit of detail in here just right around there and then I added uh, there's even a curve tool in here which is really nice and let's reset this curve tool here and then on the curves tool, I just added a little bit of a little bit of an S curve, which is a typical contrast bump. Now, if I click on the canvas, you can see the before and the after. So just a little bit of simplification there. And then I just click OK here, and that sends us back into Photoshop. And here we are back in Photoshop. I'm going to apply a layer mask here. So just come down here and click on the uh, layer mask icon and. I'm going to get a uh, brush, type B for the brush tool. Make your brush on the larger size here. And have the opacity at around 20%. And you want to make sure you're painting with black paint. So type the X key, X key if you're not on black paint. Whenever you're on a layer mask, it's always going to give you white and black paint. So I'm just going to take 20% of that simplify effect off these foreground rocks in here. Just to let a little bit of that detail show through, even in here in this section right in here. Just a little, little bit of that detail come back through here. The next step we do is we're going to add a little extra detail through uh, Topaz. 
Now let's pull the whole image together. Shift Option Command or Control E. And let's name this layer Topaz uh, Precision Contrast. Because that's what we're going to do next. And we're going to come up to Filter and come down to Topaz Studio 2. And then we're going to come up here to add Filter. Uh, precision contrast. Now we're just going to pop a little bit of detail in here with precision contrast. So what we'll do is let's pull up our micro contrast and we're only going to apply this in strategic places. Okay. So I'm going to go a little overboard here. Let's get our low contrast up a little bit. And let's see. Do I want a medium in there? Maybe a slight bit. And I might pull my high back to the left a little bit. So you got this little bit of an angle going on here. And that's good. I'm going to go ahead and click Accept. And the next thing I want to do is put a black layer mask on here. So that will be an option. And click on the layer mask. And that's a hide all layer mask. So what I want to do here is add that detail up into these rocks. I don't want any on the water here. I want some of these rocks. I might paint a little bit up on these trees too. I'm going to show you something cool. Type L for the lasso key, and let's just lasso. This is a quick way of adding this adjustment to many rocks at once. So let's just loosely go over our rocks here, like so. And now this is an important step. You want to right-click inside of the selection and click on Feather. And let's feather that to like 20 pixels. Click OK. And what we're going to do is fill this section where... We have the layer mask targeted, so Shift Delete opens up your Fill dialog box. You want to make sure your contents, there's a drop down menu here, is set to white and click OK. And that adds that effect right there. Now if I type Command D, okay, you can see it. Now let me click the eyeball here before and after. See how it adds that detail right there? Now let's come over to this side and draw a loose selection around here. Even get this rock up in here around here maybe in here a little bit something like that now if I wanted to I could hold the shift key down to add to the selection and just at one fell swoop we'll get all of this stuff right in here even this rock down in here I'm continuing to hold my shift key down maybe even come across here like that maybe even grab these rocks back up in here like so and now let's do a shift delete again to bring up the fill dialog box and wait hit cancel sorry I forgot to feather this selection so right click and click on feather and make sure you have a radius of 20 and that's 20 pixels click OK and so that gives you the nice little uh, softness on the edges here and then shift delete and fill that with white and let's command D to deselect and let's look at our before and after so see that we can quickly so I didn't have to go and paint everything in there it was nice now I'm gonna get a brush B for brush and so we're gonna paint on this mask so make sure you have white paint right now we have black paint so I'm gonna type the X key my opacity is at 20% I'm gonna bump that up to 100% so I'm gonna type the zero key and I just want to throw some detail back in these areas back in here just certain areas not everywhere Okay, maybe on. Make my brush a little smaller here. Hit these trees here, right up in here. I did do that with the lasso tool. But let's just throw a little bit of detail. Just in certain little spots. And I've, I've already done that. So let's option click the layer mask so we can see what we painted. And that's what we painted. Look, I missed a little bit right there. So option click it again. Now let's click the eyeball. So here's the before and here's the after. But see that just adds a nice little bit of extra detail in there. Brings back some detail to the simplification that we've made. Now just study your image and see if it needs anything now before your next step. But right now I think it looks still to me just a little too dark. So what I want to do is get a curves adjustment layer. And I want to pop up the midtones a little bit by pulling straight up on this curve here. Maybe somewhere around in there. And now give it a little contrast by just coming down to the to the quarter tones down here and just click and drag, put a point in there and drag slightly down just for a little bit of contrast. Not much, just a little bit. Now here is, let's click the eyeball before and after. See, it just gives, a, gives it a little bit more light and I think that's good.
The next thing I want to do is add some, you know, emphasis to this water, cascading water area here. So I'm going to use a uh, vignette to do that. I'm going to do a freehand vignette. You've seen me do this before. I'm going to type the L key. And I'm just going to draw a loose selection around this water here. Just like so. And I'm going to use my Tony Kuiper action. So I'm going to click on this TK action right here and click freehand. Vignette. Now you have to have your lasso tool drawn first. I'm going to click OK because I usually accept the radius it gives me for my camera. That works out nicely, but you can alter this if you need to. Click OK. Now that gives you a vignette at 50%. So let's just pull that off and just slowly build that up. And we just, like I said, we just want to draw a little bit of emphasis into the waterfall. And I think something like that. Now let's click this eyeball on and off. And that's looking really nice. So it makes our eyes go right into this waterfall. The next thing we want to do is do a little bit of dodging and burning. So let me get my Tony Kuiper action here. And it's right here. This is dodge. All it does is puts you a blank layer here, uh, setting you up with an overlay blend mode. And we're going to paint with white paint. I'm going to put my paint typically down to around... Uh, Let's try 20%. And I'm just going to pick out some light areas, like see like this tree right up in here. Places where I think a little light would look nice, just to add a little bit of interest to the image here. And 20%, maybe up in here just a little bit. Like a little bit of light playing through the forest here. Back in here, kind of pulls you back into the image. Let's throw a little bit on here. And just look for areas that are light and just throw little bits of light across them and maybe on these rocks right here maybe I'm gonna go down to 10% so I'm gonna type the one key and some of the foreground stuff in here okay maybe on this rock you can hit it several times every time you swipe across it you're getting another 10% of paint okay maybe some of these rocks up in here just adds a little bit of interest. But I think dodging and burning is really where it's at. This will really take your image from an average image to a great image a lot of times. Just adds some character, some depth, some dimension. Even on some of these rocks in here. And you can hit these waterfalls here. These cascades or whatever you want to call them. Hit some of these areas. You know, throw some highlights here and there. Not everywhere, but just to draw some attention, maybe back in here, maybe these rocks that are sitting back in here. Okay, maybe this little bit right in here, and how about on some of the moss on this rock over here, because I think it looks really nice. And maybe in here a little bit, maybe on this little waterfall here, just to draw some attention to it. Maybe in here, maybe throw a little bit of light in there. but. Just play with it. Now let me click this eyeball so here's the before and after. So I'm thinking that's looking pretty good. Now if you feel you've went too strong, you could take the opacity and just back it off just a little bit. And I, I like it, so I'm going to leave it around 86%. Now here's the before and here's the after. Now the next thing we want to do is do a little bit of burning. So let's get a uh, burn tool. So here's the action for the burn tool here. Again, it just makes a blank layer, sets you up with black paint and put you in a soft light mode okay so i'm at 10 percent i'm going to leave it at 10 percent and i'm just going to hit some of these darker areas again to add a little bit of depth here maybe on some of this shadow in here and think like a painter but look for darker areas because that's mainly what you're interested in maybe some of these shadows down in the water in here just play around, have some fun here. Hit some shadows. And maybe on this rock on the edge here. Down in here a little bit. Maybe up in these trees a little bit. Just find a couple little spots of interest that might help the image. Maybe I'll darken that tree on the edge there a little bit. So you want to play your darks against your lights, which is nice. And that's how you get that dimensional look to your image almost adds like a three-dimensional look at times when you do this so it really really helps out a lot 
let's uh, click this eyeball now. Here's the before and here's the after. So just a little bit. Maybe I'll hit some of these rocks up in here. So play off some of these shadows in here. And maybe right in there a little bit. And just take your time. I'm going quick here, but I'm going to stop at that. And I think that looks good. After studying this a little bit, I think I'm going to darken this rock down here a little bit. So I'll make my brush a little bit bigger. I'm still painting with black paint at 10%, so I'm just going to go over this a couple times. Just want to darken that up a little bit. Just to keep your, keep your eyes away from this area right here. Okay, good. And then the thing I want to do now is I've already added a vignette around here, but let's draw a vignette around the edge of the image here. So let's get a lasso tool. So type L for the lasso tool, and we'll just draw a uh, kind of an organic shape around the edges of the image, wherever you think they should be. Something like that. And let me get my Tony Kepper action. Uh, freehand vignette. Except the 468 pixels. And it's in multiply blend mode at 50%. Let's click the eyeball on. Here's the before and here's the after. So that's nice. And it just draws your attention in a little bit to the center of the image here. And we have that other vignette around here, which I like it. So let's take the opacity. Let's take it the whole way off. And let's just build it up slowly. Because we don't want I don't want you to see the vignette, but I just want to draw you into the image to keep you into this portion of the image so i want your eye to be coming in here and dragging you down through and this light pulls you out in the and then the darkened edges keeps you inside of the frame so that's what vignettes are all about keeping you in the image and keeping you and keeping you from going out of the image we're almost done and again i always tell you observe your images and i see right here it looks a little blurry here and it was really raining as i told you earlier when i shot this and there was a water drop i believe on my lens right here so i'm going to get a lasso tool so you can type the l key to get your lasso tool and draw a selection around this blurry section in here just like so and then let's come up to edit and come down to content aware fill and that opens up the content aware interface I'm in the custom mode here, so I can come and paint a section that I wanted to sample from. And I think I wanted to sample from this section right in here. Let me just paint a little bit here first and see what it does over here. Yeah, I don't like that. Okay, so I'm going to paint a little bit more down through here and see what that does. Okay, that looks, that's not looking too bad. Let's play around with this a little bit. Um, Let's try the uh, color adaptation is on default. Let's try high. That looks pretty good. I think that's believable. I'm just going to let it go at that. I think, I think it's acceptable. This is more of a painterly image, and I think that's fine. I'm going to output this to a new layer. Click OK. And Command D to deselect, or Control D to deselect. And that looks nice. So this is without it and that's with it so I think that really helps it but there we go I'm gonna option click the first layer the background layer so we can see the original so here's our boring dull rainy day image not much color kind of drab and hey I'd like to salvage it I wanted to salvage this image and so I thought a little bit of painterly effect would really help it out so let's option click this again and here's our after and I think that really looks good. I've made this image in the past and a lot of people have really enjoyed it. So I wanted to make it for you today. I hope you learned a lot and uh, there it is. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video today. This, this was a lot of fun taking just a kind of a boring image and turning it into something kind of fun and I think really came out really nice. Uh, if you liked the video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and click the bell notification icon. This way, every time I put out a new training video, you'll be notified about it. Well, thank you all so much for joining me today on The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing.